Finland says it will close all but one of its border crossings with Russia due to a surge in asylum seekers. The decision comes after it shut several other border crossings last week. Helsinki is accusing Moscow of funneling people to its borders. Russia has denied that claim. DW's Terry Schultz has more. Desperate humans, one of the hybrid warfare weapons Moscow frequently uses to try to intimidate its neighbors. This time, the deployment of hundreds of inadequately dressed asylum seekers in Finland has prompted the government to close border crossings with Russia. Even though the numbers have not been so significant on their own, Finland wants to send a clear message that this uh, is not acceptable. Officials say the latest arrivals admit getting Russian assistance. Apparently, the route is that they fly or are flown to Moscow, where they get help, probably for a fee. This reverses long-standing cooperation in which Russian border officials would prevent people without visas from going further. Now they're reportedly driving the groups of mostly young men to the border area, giving them bicycles, although crossing by both bike and foot are banned, and in some cases even physically pushing people across the border if they show reluctance. The Russian government calls such accusations groundless and Finland's border restrictions absurd. We hope that common sense will prevail in Helsinki and they will abandon destructive ideas like the total closure of the border. Helsinki has asked for backup of 60 officers from the European Union's border control agency Frontex. To Russia we say, we will not let you divide us. To Finland we say, the European Union is behind you. Under international law, Finland must keep open at least one land route for asylum seekers to lodge applications. When the government closed the four crossings in southern Finland, it kept two more open to facilitate this process, but warned more countermeasures may be taken. The situation could soon become more difficult, both practically and politically. Even if the number of arrivals doesn't escalate dramatically, the temperature is dropping. If Russia indeed starts to send people, let's say elderly people, but sick people, people who are in bad shape in these weather conditions who could potentially even die. If that would be the case, that's toxic politically on the Finnish side, and that's going to be a test for resilience. But opening the gates would also be dangerous. That also sends the signal that, that at the end of the day, we can be pressured to do what Russia wants. By the end of this interview, Henry von Hunen was getting news alerts that asylum seekers in poor physical condition were indeed turning up at the border. A dilemma for the Finnish government made no less precarious just because it was predictable. And our EU correspondent Terry Schultz, who fired that, filed that report, joins us now. Terry, give us a sense of the scale of the problem that Finland is facing on its border with Russia. Well, Terry, it's not that the numbers are so incredibly high, as we've seen, for example, in the Mediterranean, but they are high for Finland. For example, in November already, they've received some 700 people, and this is up from receiving zero people at the border in the early part of this year. So they can definitely see that the trend is changing, and they want to send a crystal clear message to Moscow right now that they will not stand for it. And, you know, there were arguments within the government to shut all all the border crossings. The prime minister wanted to do so, but a justice official informed them about this rule that a land border had to remain open for asylum applications, and that's why now they've moved the only processing point to the northernmost border station. That's more than a thousand kilometers north of Helsinki. So they're hoping that uh, this will make it so difficult for this this organized uh, train of asylum seekers to reach that the numbers will drop now. It's getting extremely cold there, of course, on Finland's eastern border. What sort of conditions are migrants facing there from a humanitarian perspective, Terry? Yes, it's already very cold up there. You can see in those pictures that uh, there's plenty of snow on the ground and these people are arriving um, not well clad for this kind of weather. And, you know, on the Russian side of the border, uh, they say that there are already hundreds of people in these northernmost points waiting to cross. And uh, the, a governor in, in uh, the Murmansk region is, is writing himself on his Telegram account that, um, that his, his region can't deal with it. And they're calling in uh, further resources 
forces to deal with the people that are waiting on the Russian side of the border. And he's shown pictures of them waiting in tents. So clearly there is the potential for a humanitarian um, uh, difficulties there. And that, as Henry Von Hennen explained, is going to put pressure on the Finnish government not to just leave people there under these conditions on the Russian side of the border. Now, Finnish authorities have accused Russia of instrumentalizing migrants and using them as part of its hybrid warfare against Finland. What do they mean by that, Terry? Finland is well experienced in, in Russian tactics, um, all kinds of them, and they call this a hybrid warfare tactic, that, that Russia simply tries to destabilize society by whatever means possible. Now that Finland is a member of NATO, of course, military threats don't carry as much weight as they might have when Finland had to stand on its own. But this is one thing that really does get under the Finns' skin. Um, the, it, migration is a very sensitive issue in Finland. Uh, it's not particularly uh, open to people coming in. And so now there's the, the worry that this could divide society between the people who want to let uh, these people in and want to get them sort of out of the clutches of these Russian, Russian uh, migrant uh, dealers and those who say, absolutely not, we cannot let them in because that would be sending Russia a signal that, that they can have their way with us. So there is the, the concern that this will ignite a, a societal divide. Uh, it hasn't been seen yet, but these are the concerns. And this is, of course, the Russian aim. Terry, thank you very much. Uh, that was DW's Terry Schultz in Brussels.